Hello, hello, hello. This is Ella Patillo, Truth in Love channel. Listen, I want I I gotta get in here and get out, but it's been so long and I haven't been consistent, so I came to bring you something. Uh as I said, it's been it's been a long time. So many things has happened in my life. It's been a whirlwind. There's there's just so many opportunities that have opened for me to give back to others. For me to share the word, for me to uh, do some things to help the community, different things like that. And so it's been a whirlwind. Then some things happen on my job that's really, uh, you know, beneficial for me. Um, some things that are happening now, I wish that it would have happened 30 years ago. But, you know, I'm going I'm to accept the blessing now and walk in it. And so... Uh, just wanted to come and uh, hang out for a minute uh, and see what I can put in it and, and you know, try to uh, bring this message that has been designed with you in mind from the engrafted word of God. Today, I'm talking about the destructive aspect of pride, the uh, destructive aspects of pride. One of the scriptures that's famous concerning pride is the first scripture that I'm going to talk to you about. And that is the one that talks about pride coming before destruction. And Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. In other words, pride sets us up on a path of sex self-exaltation and blind us of our vulnerabilities. It leads us to our downfall, separating us from God and his purpose for our lives. Pride sets us up for self-exaltation. So when something is exalted, it's lifted up. And... When we exalt ourselves, we're lifted up. We got people thinking that we the, the 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 best thing going. You know, we got situations and circumstances that's taking place, and we're lifting ourselves above it with our own mouths, and that's not a good thing, because when we do that. We have to recognize that just like we have raised ourselves up we can fall down and if we fall down and we talk too much and we rate we talk about how 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 sharp we are and how how smart we are and how uh uh great we are when we talk like that people are listening to that some people say it's cool you know do do your thing you yeah you are all that in a bag of chips you know you are, i know that's old but i'm saying you know, you are you are all that and and, and and you know you, you got it like that. But when you fall, because many people, I know some people that was big ballers, you know, they, they had everything going on for them, but when they fell, people laughed at them and people did not want to give them a leg up or a handout or something to get them back on their feet. Why? Because they talk so crazy and they talk so proud like they were Superman or Superwoman. They talk like they had it on the ball and they was uh, uh, somebody that could not be brought down that when they fell down, people turned their backs on them. But the bottom line is this. You show me a man that's walking around with a lot of pride I can show you that's I can show you a man that's gonna have a fall one day. Why can I show you that? Because the scripture just said, pride go before destruction. And a haughty spirit, an arrogant, you know, I'm not, I'm all that, and you ain't nothing. That time of a spirit, that type of a spirit is coming down. God said it. It's in the word. We may not get a chance to see it. We may not witness this, but that person is coming down. How many years have we seen people in the White House look like they can't be touched, they look like nothing can happen, and they're proud and arrogant and say what they want to say and do what they want to do? 
pride go before destruction and a haughty spirit before it fall. That person is coming down. You can't buck the scripture. You can't buck the word of God. It's going to be like that. And so I wanted you all to know if you see pride in your life, humble yourself. You ain't all that. And if you are all that, it's only because God made you all that. And so instead of talking about who you are, talk about who he is. Talk about what he did for you. Don't talk about what you've done. Because without him, you could do nothing. The next one I want to talk to you about is pride is an abomination to God. That's an abomination to God. When something is an abomination, that means God hates it. It's nasty. It's, 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 it's something that he don't want to even put his hand on. It's something that he don't even want to be around. It's something that he don't even uh, look at in any nice, kind way. But he's angry. The scripture said the Lord is angry at the wicked every day. And he hates pride. It's an abomination. It's one of the worst sins that you can have. Proverbs 16 and 5, the Bible teaches us. It says that a proud heart is an abomination to the Lord. God desires humility, virtue, and acknowledges our dependence on him. When we allow pride to take root with distance, I'm sorry, we distance ourselves from God's favor and righteousness. When we allow pride to make us think that we are so much, when we get that nice car and we think that we are so much, or we got the finest woman on our arm and everybody's looking at it and everybody's wondering, how did you get her? And you got your chest stuck out because you think you all of that. God don't care nothing about her, about you having her. God don't care about her, the fact that she's shaped like a Coca-Cola bottle. God don't care if she's stacked in the back like that. It don't matter to God. If you're walking around with pride and you got your chest stuck out, you'll mess around and she'll be standing there by herself. Or you'll be standing there by yourself. God is everything. God does everything for us. We can do nothing without him. So why would we walk around with our chest stuck out? I don't care if you can sing like David Ruffin, Temptation. You didn't do that. God gave you that voice. You might have perfected it a little bit and put some little stuff on it to try to make it better, but God gave you the voice. Why would you stick your chest out like you did that? God did that. The next scripture, pride leads to conflict and strife. Listen, most of the time when you find people always arguing, they're always fighting, they're always in contention, they always want to get at each other, they can't be around each other for a few minutes. I know men and women like that. When you find that happening, that's because of pride. Somebody won't humble themselves. Somebody won't take the low road sometimes just to end the conflict so they can think clearer and do the right things. I'm not taking down. What I said is what I said. Sometimes what you said ain't nothing because it comes from your mind. And we don't always think right. We're not always right. You find a person that no matter what you say to them, they're always right. That's pride. And I can promise you this. According to the scripture, they're going to be shown that they are nothing. They're going to suffer loss. They're going to be destroyed if they don't get that together. Pride. God does not like pride. Okay. Proverbs 13 and 10. The scripture reveals to us that only by pride cometh contention. But the well advised is wisdom. Pride... Listen, let me tell you something. If you ever see a man or a woman, if you ever see them and you, you recognize that they have wisdom, you look at that person and say, wow, that man got a lot of wisdom. That woman have a lot of wisdom. You look at that person and say, you know, I like the way they carry themselves. You can tell they got a lot of wisdom. 
You know what you're going to also see? You're going to also see humility. Everybody, just about everybody that you see that's wise, you're going to also see humility. Because wise people understand that humility is a great thing to have. And it's a thing that you ought to have, especially if you have wisdom. And Solomon in the scripture, he got wisdom because he humbled himself and he said, listen, I ain't trying to be, you know, uh, uh, I ain't trying to run these folks lives and, and all of that, you know, or well, he wanted to run their lives and he wanted to lead them. But he said, I don't need to be rich so I could be up. I, I could be, you know, all that. I don't want to have this and I don't want to have that and everything. I just want to lead your people. I just want wisdom. And God said, because you didn't ask me for all of that stuff so you could flunk flaunt it around and stunt and flex. Since you didn't ask me for all of that, I'm going to give you more wisdom than anybody. The man had wisdom. Why? Because he was humble. You want to get wisdom? First of all, the scripture said, anybody that lacks wisdom, let them ask of God. And one of the ways that you can receive it is you got to humbly receive it. The word that I preach and other people preach, many people can't receive it because they're proud. But there's one scripture that says, receive with meekness the engrafted word of God. You have to do it with meekness or humility. If you all, I don't need nothing and I, I got my lesson and, you know, uh, I, I read this and I'm with these folks and everything and we got everything. Listen, you can't receive the word of God. You got to do it with meekness because the word of God will come and smash you. And if you are humble, when he's smashing you, he's, he's smashing you to squeeze some of the stuff out of you that should not be. He's mashing on you and grinding on you so you can be a better person and so you can have what you need to have. So you can have today what others won't have tomorrow because they won't accept what God is doing for them today. So they can't have it tomorrow. Pride, conflict. God opposes the pride. James 4 and 6 say, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. God resists the pride. Ain't no sense of you praying and you proud. Ain't no sense of you preaching and you proud. There's no sense of you trying to run the revival and you proud. There's no sense of you trying to call yourself a real man and you proud. A real man knows how to humble himself. A real man knows when to humble himself. A real man knows when to fight and when not to fight. And he doesn't care if other people are pushing him to fight. He humbles himself to the will of God. And he says, Lord, what should I do about this situation? I'm not going to run off half cock because my friends or these people are watching me and they want me to do this or they want me to do that. I'm going to walk in the spirit because in the spirit there is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But you can never receive it unless you humble yourself. You can't, you can't get nothing from God if you don't humble yourself. He opposes the proud. Pride hinders repentance and forgiveness. A lot of people won't repent. A lot of people won't say, I'm sorry. A lot of people won't say, forgive me. A lot of people won't come and say, well, how can we work this thing out? They won't do any of that. They can't do it. They can't even see that they need to do it. Why? Because pride has blinded them. You got some people right now, the whole, there's people walking around right now, the whole relationship can be fixed with two words. I'm sorry. Three words can fix a whole family, Lord. Or with the family, please forgive me. Those same three words can fix it with you and God. Lord, please forgive me. That's the start of healing. But some people have pride and that pride is I'm not apologizing for nothing. 
Listen, there's been times when I've been in situations where I thought I was right, but the person was so messed up about the situation, I apologize anyway. I apologize anyway. Now, I know that there's people that say, well, if I if you feel like I did this, then I'm sorry. No, it's not like that. Because if you, if you, first of all, if you're wagging your head, you're not sorry. And, first, and second of all, if you don't know what you did, you're not sorry. Now, the statement I made is I felt I was right, but I said I was sorry anyway. I wasn't being phony. What I really was saying, I'm sorry that you have been affected by my actions that way, even though I don't believe that I'm wrong. I'm sorry that you took what I said and applied it to yourself in a negative way, and now that now you feel bad. I'm sorry for that. I'm not sorry for what I said a lot of times. I'm not going to take back what I said, but I will say, without breaking it down and making it worse, I will say I'm sorry. When I know I'm not wrong. Why? Because I'm interested in you being okay. I'm interested in you not walking around with something in your heart. That if you drop dead, you'll be lost. See, if we drop dead and we got something in our hearts against somebody, we going straight to hell. We out of here. Alright? So... Be willing to apologize. Be willing to repent. Be willing to say I'm sorry. Why? Because that's humility. And again, sometimes it's not even for the person. It's for you to be humble and practice being humble. So when situations arise, that'll be your go-to strategy. Instead of flying off and thinking you all that and talking about what you want to do. Because God sees that. And God will fight for you. When you're humble. God will step in. And take care of the matter. When you're humble. God will fix it. When you're humble. But when you're trying to fix it. A lot of times we, we, mess, we mess it up. Humble yourself. And let God fix it. Pride pre prevents spiritual growth. You can't grow in God. If you get pride. The scripture says, 1 Corinthians 8, well, let me go back to pride hinders repentance and forgiveness. Proverbs 28, 13, the Bible warns, he that covers his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. You got to confess, I'm sorry. And a lot of times when you say, I'm sorry, you got to confess what it was that you're sorry about. But if you got pride, you're not going to repent. If you got pride, you're not going to confess that, yeah, I'm sorry for hurting you. Yeah, that thing I said about you was, was wrong. You're not going to say anything about that. Why? Because you're too proud. So that's how people cover their sins. There's one thing about covering their sins, sneaking around and doing things, and they think that they're covering their sins. But there's another way to cover your sins, and that is by pride, you don't even acknowledge them. You act like they don't even happen. You act like they haven't even happened. We know a man with, 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 with orange hair. He done, he done lied and said that things did not happen so many times because of his pride that sometimes you thinking, did that happen? Was he really that bad? Did he really do the things that obviously he did? Because he keeps saying he didn't do it. And he keeps saying that everything he's done is, is right. And he never messed up. He's never wrong. But did he get people hoodwinked and some people just leave, leave, they leave it alone and say, hey, you know, I can't. I think I saw the evidence, but he keeps saying he didn't do it. And he keeps, he keeps saying he never admits to being wrong about anything. Maybe he's not wrong. And you know he's wrong. You know she's wrong. But she keeps denying it and walking around in pride like it never happened or like it doesn't exist. Because sooner or later, if she keeps up that front, if she keeps on hiding the sin or the offense that she's done, Pretty soon you'll just let it go and start thinking maybe it didn't happen. 
And that's be good for you. You can walk away and be forgiving. But that's not good for the person. Because they really can't. You can't hide from God. He said, listen, my eyes are every place beholding the good or the evil as well as the good. So you, how you going to hide? So it hinders forgiveness. Now the next one is pride prevents spiritual growth. Knowledge puffs, as scripture says over here, 1 Corinthians 81, knowledge puffs up. But love, it says, knowledge puffs up, but charity edifies. We know that in the scripture, that really means love edifies. Love builds up. It builds you up. Love. It builds up the people around you. You care for people. You are humble and you, you give yourself to people and you look out for things uh, of other people more so than you look out for yourself. That's scripture. Scripture tells you to set other people's stuff higher than your own stuff. You have to humble yourself to do Hey, I'm like, that. please, I got to take care of me. Hey, El Numero Uno, I got to take care of me first. And then I have, but God said, take care of these people over here. Humble yourself and do that and watch how I take you and build you up and give you the things that you need. Scripture says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Not according to somebody else's riches. Hey, I want to help you out, but I ain't got nothing for $20. But God said, I want to help you out. He got more than $20 because it's according to his riches. So he's going to bless you according to his riches. And it might not even be money. But in order for that type of stuff to happen between you and God, you got to be humble and take care of other people, esteem other people's more than yourself. We got people that feel like a woman, their woman, their wife are supposed to be under them and they're supposed to have their foot on their neck and whatever they say go and they second class citizens and, you know, they don't mean nothing. But that ain't what the scripture says. I know Kevin Samuel and all these different people, you know, they they dog and women and talk about women don't have no value and what do you bring to the table? But according to the scripture, you can't treat women like that. Because the scripture says, set her above you. That's concerning things that helps her and things that makes her a better person. Things that help her thrive and survive because if you're a man you're supposed to be thriving and surviving anyway but you put her above yourself you put her first if you don't if you wouldn't hit yourself why would you hit her if you're going on the trip this way and she going on the trip that way and both of you all need a car you don't give her the hoopty and let her go that way while you take the the the, the foreign car and you, you riding and you rolling and you styling, smiling and profiling. You don't do that. You put her above you and you give her the best because you may know how to do a couple of things. I know I don't know how to do some things, but I could change a flat. Or if I get stranded, I'm less likely to be hurt by somebody or, or be in danger. Now, it can happen to a man or a woman, but I'm less likely because I'm a man. My wife, she ain't going to be able to take that. She need a good car to make, where she can be able to go where she's going and then get back. So I put her above me and I gave her the best car. See, I humble myself. I wanted the best car, you know what I'm saying? But I humble myself. You get the car. All right. That's what we're talking about. Number seven, because these were eight points. Number seven, pride, pride distorts our perception. You can't see when you're proud. You can, people can argue with you, fight with you, fuss with you, all those different things, but you can't see it. You can't, you can't even understand what they're talking about to save your life. Why? Pride. That's why you walk into a ditch or walk into a wall and bust your head. Because pride goes before destruction. In other words, you see pride before you see destruction. But you know that pride 
it's showing you that destruction is coming. That's what the scripture said, go up before. In other words, it, it walks before you. You'll see that first. And then you'll see destruction. Proverbs 12, uh, 21, 2. Every way of man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondered the heart. The Lord pondered the heart. He look on the heart and he knows what's going on with you. And while you think in one way, he'll come and talk to you about what's really in your heart so you won't make a wrong move. Because we don't know ourselves. We think we do, but we don't. God had to reveal you to you. All right? Listen, don't be fooled. Humility is the way to go. I didn't say be a chump. I didn't say be somebody's flunky or fool. I said just be, have humility. Listen, when I was out there in the street, I went a lot of places and I seen a lot of place, faces and I never had a problem because I always knew how to carry myself. I've been in some situations I thought, man, this is an ugly situation. But I know how to humble myself. People that get my book, they will see a story that I wrote in there about going to jail. And I went. In, I was in a holding pattern in Jolliet, Illinois. And back then, they were smoking in the prison. And I walked in the joint, and uh, they put me in this cell, in a waiting cell that had two bunks. When I walked in, there was a pack of cigarettes on, the, on, the, on one of them. And I knew for a fact, one of the things you do not do is touch something that nobody or nobody gave you the uh, permission. But I had to have a cigarette. So I, I picked that pack up and I grabbed one of those cigarettes and I smoked it. When the guy came in, he's a big old dude. They call him Satan. I'm 5'7". He had to be 6'3 or something like that. Back then, I was because I was on them drugs, I was weighing about 150. He looked like he had to be at least 250. But something in me said that no matter what he come in here with, you can handle it. You know, and before I seen him, I said, if I have to fight, I have to fight. But I wanted one of them cigarettes. That's how bad I was smoking. But something told me that if he come in, you know how to talk to a person. You know what to do. And when he came in, I apologized as soon as he walked in the door. And uh, we got to kicking it around a little bit. I think we found out we knew some people in the hood. You know, he was on one side of the track. I was on one side. That could have been a problem because, you know, we, you know, we come from different sets. And it was on, a, you know, at one time or another, it was it was pretty you know, some lies were taken. So we could have got into it because on, on that tip. But I came at him correct. And he came at me correct. And, you know, hey, it was all good. But I had that confidence because I know I wasn't going to, if he'd have been a person smaller than me, I wouldn't have been all tough and stuff. I would have humbled myself and said, hey, you know, I, I needed a cigarette, man. And I took it. We didn't, me and this guy had no, no static whatsoever. And his name was, they called him Satan in that prison. And so God had mercy, of course, but I've always known how to carry myself. One thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to stand up and stick my chest out. And I'm going to share a bit of wisdom with you about life or something. Next thing you know, we're going to be we gonna be cool. That's how my life is always gone. Pride blocks reconciliation and restoration. Matthew 18, 15. Jesus teaches, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against you, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Go talk to people when you have a problem. Just you and them. Don't bring your boys with you. Don't bring your wife with you. Don't bring that loud mouth girl that you with that to get you killed because she run off at the mouth and want to jump in front of you and, and talk for you and fight for you and all that. Don't don't take her with you. Go talk to this brother. 
I ain't talking about the other gang leader because, cause, you know, that you might not even be able to cross, you may not even be able to cross over where he at, but I mean somebody in your life that you all are not even seeing eye to eye right now. Go and talk to him. And make, the scripture says, make sure thy friend. Whatever it is, scripture also said, come now, let us reason together. The only way you're going to do that is you got to let your pride go. You got to humble yourself. There are people right now that they cannot fix their relationship because somebody or both parties won't humble themselves. But that's the only way it can be fixed. There's some wives and husbands. The man ain't going to humble himself because he think he the man, but he should because he wrong. She ain't gonna humble herself cause she make the most money and she 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 uh you know she educated and all that so she ain't gotta listen to him no way. You're wrong, baby. Repent. Humble yourself. That man is just as good as you are, and he don't have what you have. See who was that guy running around? We know who he was. High value men, you know, a woman need to do this and that to get a high value man. Listen, there's so many people walking around with a bunch of money that's not high, that's not high value. They don't have no values. And there's so many guys that just drive buses. There's so many guys that work in restaurants and, in, and things like that. Managers of restaurants and stuff. They got more values than some of those quote unquote high value men. One of the one of the aspects that they have and one of the characteristics of their lives is they know how to humble themselves. They're humble people. That's the highest value. Because other than that, the scripture says you are going to fall. So, with that being said, my time is out. I'm a little shorter than I usually be. Uh, I won before you long, but I hope I was before you strong. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for another day. Thank you for allowing me to bring this word, asking that you would touch somebody with it. Lord God, asking you that you would teach someone the ways of this, the ways of their actions, and the ways of your statutes, and what you would have them to do. What are we to do, Lord? What would you have us to do? In Jesus' name. For your honor and praise, Lord, forgive me for anything that I said, done, or thought that was not according to your word, according to your will. In Jesus' name. All right, y'all. I'm out of here. I'll be back. Like I said, I'll be saying more, more times. See ya.